cyfroeso i sgyrsiau ar arweinyddiaeth a gyflwynir gan Academy Wales. Ar ein podlediad, rydyn ni'n gwahodd gwasteon i siarad am ei taith arweinyddol ac yn myfyrio ar rai o'r ysbrydoliaethau ar gwersi maen nhw'n wedi dysgu ar hyd y ffordd. Welcome to Conversations on Leadership, hosted by Academy Wales. On our podcast, we invite guests to talk about their leadership journey and reflect on some of the inspirations and lessons they've learned along the way. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Molly Daisy, and for this episode, I'd like to welcome Derek Walker. Derek is the Future Generations Commissioner for Wales and was previously CEO of Compass, the UK's largest cooperative development agency. He worked to support people and communities to create jobs and strengthen communities and change the organisation's focus to development that meets the needs of current generations without compromising the needs of future generations. He has previously worked as Head of External Affairs at the Big Lottery Fund, as Head of Policy and Campaigns at the Wales TUC and was the first employee of Stonewall Cymru. So thank you so much for joining us, Derek. Thank you. If it's okay to begin with, I'd love to ask you some quick fire questions so our listeners can get to know you a bit better. Of course. So what was the last book that you read? So the last book I read was a biography by Clive James about him growing up in Australia and um, his experience of uh, being a young person at that time and his life. And it's a very funny book and I really enjoyed it. So I'm assuming you would recommend it. I would definitely recommend it. What was the last thing that you learnt? Oh, I learned, oh, things today, um, for example. So I was only able to catch some of today's sessions, um, but we were talking about leadership and um, uh, the type of leadership that has a lot of hubris and um, how dangerous that can be and how to spot it and how to prevent you being that type of leader. So I caught the tail end of that session um, but I found it, you know, really interesting and um, um, very useful to sort of question my own sort of leadership behaviours to yeah. make sure I don't become or be like that. What is your greatest strength? Oh, God, I don't know what my... You'll have to ask colleagues and friends what my greatest strengths Every are. Every single person I say says, ask other people about me. I don't know what my own strengths are. Yeah. Um, I think that's common because we're all quite modest, I suppose, I would probably say uh, I'm pretty resilient. Um, I hope to be quite collaborative, um, like to be hardworking, values led, those sorts of things. But yeah. you know, you'll have to ask others for a check on that. <laughs> Will do. What motivates you? Um, I get motivated by sort of change, I guess, positive change. So. I come from a campaigning and kind of policy background and my work even at Compass had policy and campaign elements to it, but it was also about delivery and sort of looking at um, what is happening in terms of policy and practice and making change happen. So a big part of my current job is very much about that. It's about thinking, you know, not just about putting sticking plasters on things, but looking at the long term and making things happen now to meet today's needs, but also uh, meeting the needs of future generations at the same time, rather than um, causing problems now that will cause even bigger problems for future generations. So what gets me out of bed is, you know, doing that kind of thing, finding solutions, making positive change happen, and then seeing the impact of that for, you know, for, for people and um, people that we live with in, in our communities. Yeah. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Journalism. Oh. So I very nearly went into journalism and um, I've always thought that would be a great career. You get to witness what goes on in the world, be, yeah. um, meeting lots of interesting people, hearing a lot of um, what goes, yeah, goes on in the world and uh, reporting back and communicating that to others. So I, I like to write. Um, so, you know, being a journalist would be one of the things that I would do if I wasn't doing this wrong. Amazing. Thank you for answering those. It's really interesting just to get to know a bit more about you personally. I do have a couple more of those, but I'll come back to them at the end. Okay. Um, our theme today is young leaders. 
And young leaders has become a prominent topic in leadership discussions at the moment, especially considering how the younger generation of leaders can bring quite unique perspectives and contributions to organisations. So in your opinion, how would you define the unique challenges, but also opportunities that young leaders face in today's rapidly changing and complex business landscape? Um, yeah, I think the question is about unique challenges and opportunities. Obviously, many of the challenges and opportunities that um, older leaders face are still there for younger people. Um, but I think in particular for young people, um, they face a, a rapidly changing world of work, a rapidly changing world. And um, it's going to be even more necessary than it was in my time to have flexible, transferable skills to be able to adapt for things that uh, will happen that we're not aware of yet, or the jobs that haven't even been created yet, um, but will come around very quickly. And so that creates a lot of uncertainty, but also a lot of excitement and opportunity yeah. to consider you know, new areas of work that we're not even aware of yet. So I think that must be uh, create uncertainty and excitement. I think of things like AI and artificial intelligence. Yeah. What is that going to do to the world of work and how work changes, what we do, what AI does? You know, will we be doing less work? Will we be doing different work? How will we compete with artificial intelligence for work? All of that is, you know, so uncertain and rapidly changing and that much be you know, really challenging for young people to sort of contemplate as they go about their career. Yeah. You just mentioned something that I was going to come on to about how it's such an uncertain space for new leaders. So in your experience, what are some key skills or qualities that young leaders should prioritise developing to succeed in leadership roles? Um, I think for me, it's about resilience. Um and uh, making sure that you look after yourself because you can't be a good leader if you don't look after you, your, your own well-being. Um, so you need to look after yourself, make sure you've got support networks around, um, have people to uh, ask advice of, perhaps mentors, people to download with, friends and partners and so forth. Um, so I think those are really important. Um, I think empathy is super important. So as a leader, sort of understanding other, other people's perspectives and taking time to listen to those perspectives and, you know, act on them where appropriate. Um, I think also, uh, you know, being able to take feedback. Yeah. Um, it's not easy to take no. feedback <laughs> and it's not easy to ask for feedback, but that's how we grow. And um, th that is a, you know, thing that perhaps we can do more of as we gain more confidence and we get more senior. But um, if we can do it at an early stage and um, use it to help our learning in a constructive way, I think um, that is a great skill to have that many of us, like me, find out too late, well, not too late, but you know, later than I would have liked to. Yeah. I briefly mentioned some of your leadership story uh, at the beginning but I'm sure you have so many more stories and experiences you could share. So can you share a personal experience from your own journey as a young leader? And what lessons did you learn from that experience or did it have an effect on your leadership approach? Um, I talked in the conference about allyship being important for me as a leader. You know, people that um, were allies to me as a young LGBT person in the workplace. And I was quite intimidated by that when I started my career, felt that I couldn't perhaps be myself, couldn't be honest about my relationships. Um, but actually very early on, I was lucky enough to work in places where there were many allies around that made it clear to me that working in that place was a safe space for me to be myself as a gay man. And so, um, you know, I've, I've reflected on that recently for this event and found that to be, you know, one of the important things that um, put me on the path to being a leader and gave me the confidence to do that. Um, so that has been important to me, but also I've tried to 
demonstrate that and do that as a leader myself yeah. and to be an ally for not just LGBT people, but other minority groups, other disadvantaged groups, uh, other groups that are discriminated against so that they perhaps would take some confidence from me that they were working in a safe space. They would see someone that had their back and would support them to get on too. Is there anything that you would have maybe changed about your leadership story or maybe some advice for your younger self? Oh, that's a good question. Um, what would I have said to my younger self? I think one of the things that I would say to my younger self is be bolder. So I think I have become bolder as I've got older. And perhaps when I was younger, I was a bit risk averse, a bit afraid of making mistakes. Um, but it's the, it's the old story, isn't it? You make mistakes and you learn from those mistakes. Yeah. And um, actually, you know, the other thing is we need bold action. We need significant change. There are a lot of issues in our society which are needing, um, need to be addressed and that requires bold practical action. So I wish I'd been braver and bolder earlier in my career and done more of that. Um, and I think that would have helped me make um, more, you know, more, more change uh, more quickly and to have learned more quickly from those experiences where they didn't work. That's very good advice. I think that we can all take on board. Based on your knowledge and experience, how do you think organisations and senior leaders can support and mentor the young leaders to help them reach their full potential? One of the things that was really important to me when I started my career, it was I, I was given a placement and it was um, directed at people on my course in my university. And so it was designed with a young person in mind and um, that gave me a foot on the ladder uh, that started my career that I've been ever grateful for since. Um, and so I think creating those opportunities for young people, um, specifically for young people, to support them to get experience, to get networks, to understand, you know, the world of work and what suits them are really important things to be doing. Um, I think sometimes, and I was talking about this to a colleague earlier on, sometimes it's about being clear that it might be open to a wider group of people, but that you'd welcome applications for young people. Because yeah. um, I think sometimes, you know, in time, inside organisations, we think it's clear, um, but I think we need to be specific and say, you know, we're looking for applications yeah. for young people. It might, you might not have the same number of years of experience as others, but we're also looking for your lived experience and we're looking for other qualities and um, attributes as well. And yeah, so I think it's important to be clear because sometimes um, perhaps young people won't see that or won't read that or will interpret that differently. So being clear about that is important. Yeah. Uh, we have a Future Generations Leadership Academy at the Wellbeing and Future Generations Office and that is one of the things that we do to support young people, get an understanding of the legislation, but also to support them in their careers in the Welsh public sector. And um, it's life changing. People tell me who've been through the programme that it really can be life changing for them. And something like that for me had been the same. So I completely get that. So more of these opportunities would be a really good thing, I think. Thank you so much for all the stories, ideas and advice today. And um, before we end, I would like to ask a few more quick fire questions, if that's okay. okay. Do you or have you ever played a musical instrument? I have played a few musical instruments and I was terrible. So <laughs> one of them was uh, piano and I, I got to grade three and each year my grade, or each time I did a grade, grade one, grade two, then grade three, I got closer and closer to the pass mark and I think oh, I just no. scraped it at grade three <laughs> and then I thought I'm not you know I'm, I'm not going to go any further partly because I thought um, you know I'm not going to pass the next one but that's no reason to not keep trying um, but yeah I, I had no natural talent for it so I, di I did a bit but it's it's uh, I don't really have a musical ear so it's not my thing. <laughs> what is your favorite type of food? Oh god um so many to choose from. I guess I particularly like Asian food. So I like Thai food. I love Vietnamese food. I like Chinese food. That type of food is probably my favorite because I find it to be really tasty, but also 
um, often can be quite healthy too. So yeah. it's good. It's dangerous asking that question so close to like the evening dinner yes. time because it just gets me so hungry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is your favourite noise? My favourite noise? Oh God, I've never been asked that question before. Um, probably the sound of the sea, I would say. I yeah. find that very calming. I guess a lot of people would say that, but I think that is true. Um, the sound of the sea, I do find very relaxing. And uh, myself and my partner and our family go to West Wales quite a bit. And once you sort of hear the sound of the yeah. waves, it can sort of put me in a different space. Yeah. Put my cares of the everyday uh, away and um, start to relax me straight away. So probably the sound of the sea. Are you more of a morning person or a night owl? I've changed. So I used to be a night owl and now I'm a morning person. Oh. Weird how that has happened, but I got into a routine during COVID to do exercise every day, first thing in the morning. That's what my gym did online. And so rather than do it in the evenings, I started do it, doing it in the mornings. And now, so this is half past six every morning and um, I've continued with it. So it's meant that I go to bed much earlier than I used to and I get up early yeah. and I get up early on the weekends as well. I at least wake up early on the weekends as well. So my body clock has shifted a bit to becoming more of a real morning yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, last question is if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Wow. Oh, goodness. Um, or you might have to edit out this pause while I think about it. <laughs> no, honestly, this is the one that people think about the most. Yeah. Because I think there's just so much to consider. There's so, you you know, it's world peace, <laughs> it's ending poverty. We, we do have some people that go with something that would make a massive change for society. And then there's a couple that's like flying. Yeah. I'd like to fly. <laughs> so whatever you feel like. I went straight to the, yeah, I guess it's my background in sort of policy and campaigning and changing the world. And it would be something around changing the world, you know, yeah. you know, ending war, ending poverty, creating a much more equal society where everyone's got a chance and uh, fairer outcomes. It would be in that space that I'd want my superpower. Good to know. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the experience as much as I have. I have. Jochen Val, thank you. My name is Podlediad, Scorsiae and Arwinediad, and Gael Troyan Gwevan. My name is Podlediad, and I'm going to be in Cael Egadu and Llywodraeth Cymru. Our Conversations on Leadership podcast is available through our website. Copyright of this podcast is held by the Welsh Government.